Cast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning and welcome to uh, the first in the how to webinar series with Blueback Toolbox, useful tools for seismic interpretation and enhancing your workflows. Firstly, um, thank you very much for signing up. Um, it's, it's greatly appreciated. We plan to run these sessions over the next four weeks. Um, there are multiple sessions as you will have seen in the email, so please uh, sign up. We also want you to tell us if you want to see more and uh, we can add more to this uh, series of webinars. We just want you to tell us what you want to see. And if you want to find out anything more uh, that you see in these uh, how-to series, please contact your Segal account manager that will have sent you this email or contact sales at segal.com. The format for today and for the series will be each session lasting 20 to 30 minutes. Each session will be recorded and you'll get a copy of the recording uh, via email 24 hours after the webinar. So even if there's uh, webinars you can't make and you uh, wish to still get the recording, please sign up for them. The recording will also be made available on the Segal YouTube channel after uh, this webinar uh, completes. And if there's time at the end, we'll use that time for Q&A and you can submit those in the chat window. Um, it's now my pleasure to hand over to Lisa Castelline, who's going to take you through this morning's how-to session. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everybody. So <clears throat> for this session, uh, the situation that we have, it's we have a basic modeling exercise and we want to incorporate several seismic cubes uh, in different locations with different amplitude range. What we want to do after is to do a regional horizon interpretation across all data sets. So the challenges are we have different cubes with different amplitudes and different lattice geometries. So our solution will be first to balance all seismic volumes into a common RMS target using amplitude balancing. Then we will merge the cubes to obtain one cube using merge and resample. Then we will cut the edges of the large cube, cut the large cube using cut seismic. And then we'll jump into an interpretation window and use several, uh, several tools like Minimap, Deep Indicator, Fault Contact, Seismic Probe, and Outcrop Attribute. But let's stop with the PowerPoint. Let's jump into Betrayal. <clears throat> so this is our uh, situation. We have three volumes, section one, two, and three. So the three volumes have uh, the same color template at, this, at the moment, and you can see right away that section three has a different amplitude. I have created here um, a ruler, so we can see that we have our in length uh, nine kilometers of data set and over um, 900 milliseconds. So the ruler, we can find the ruler in the tool palette, in the blue back toolbox tool palette. And it's a very useful tool to measure distance. And the great fact, it's, it's saved as an object in your input tree, so you can keep it for later. So here I've created a new one. And you can see that you also have the angle compared to the true north. So if you don't like the ruler, you can deselect it, or you can highlight the tool and manipulate it again. So our data set is roughly 9, kilobit, 9 kilometers by 7 kilometers. So another way of QCing our uh, amplitude range is to use uh, another tool called Blueback Investigator. So I've created earlier an investigation where I bring my three data sets. And this is an histogram where we have in uh, the in the X axis amplitude versus the relative percentage. Um, I have my three sections, so section one, two, and three here. And I have also displayed some statistics. So you have these two ways of displaying the statistics. You have the table at the bottom, but you also have the possibility to uh, display the box plot where this is the minimum, this is the P10, P50, P90 and maximum. So right away we can see that section one and two are very 
um, similar, but section three, which is here, has a very narrow uh, amplitude range. So to solve our problem, we're going to use a blueback toolbox. So toolbox is located in Marina here. And toolbox, toolbox is composed of a lot of uh, different tools ordered by utilities or workflow. So here we have all this type of workflow. So we have utilities, seismic operation, interpretation tools, visualization tools, wellbore and log operation, 3D grid and model, reporting and QC, and project management. So amplitude balancing is the first tool located in seismic operation. So you can select a tool and then the tool is on the right hand side of your window. For each tool, the help is close to you. So you have the first tool, the first uh, the tool on the first tab, and on the second tab you have on the second tab, sorry, you have the help. So you have for this one the benefit and improved workflow and also the description of functionality. So you have the help very close to you. So let's go back to our workflow. So this is the amplitude balancing tool. I have already pre-selected pre uh, the different section. So you just have to select your seismic data set into, uh, from your input tab and bring them using the blue arrow. The tool gives you some information uh, about your uh, seismic data set. So first the domain, here, here my three sections are in time. They cover 100% of their survey. I have also uh, the RMS amplitude for my three data sets. You can see right away again that my section three is, has a RMS amplitude well lower than the two other. And some scale and clip data, um, which will be used for the calculation of the target RMS amplitude. For the RMS amplitude, you have also the possibility to uh, select a trace uh, window, so bottom minus top, if you want to uh, focus the analysis on, the, on a small interval. For the target RMS amplitude, you have four options, either, either average, so it's the average of all the data sets, median, selected, so here if I select uh, section one, if I select selected, then it's the RMS of the section one, or manual. For this exercise, I'm just going to use manual with a target RMS of 1000. Once you're happy with everything, you just have to click apply and the tool will create virtual volumes. So here, section one, balance version two, section two, and section three. It allows you, because it's virtual, it allows you to do uh, different tests and then realize if you wish to. So this is now my output. And if I tile, so you can see right away. So on the left hand side, I have my three inputs with a different amplitude range. And on the right hand side, I have my three outputs with a similar range. So they have the same color table, but again, what we could do is use investigator to show that our three volume are now balanced. So this is investigator, same type of uh, histogram, amplitude versus percentage. You have the statistics at the bottom with uh, a mean very close. You have the histogram where they're overlapping. And you have also the box plot at the top where all three are um, so different, uh, very similar amplitude range. Another way of QCing is to show an histogram with the, with the input and the outputs. So here in blue, we have section one, two, and three before the balance, and in Burgundy, the uh, section one, two, and three before. So we have, uh, we can see right away that our tool did a very good job. Our second, our second step will be to um, merge our three volumes. So to do that, we're going into toolbox again, and we're going to use merge and resample. So we can type the name of the tool to find it. And here we have merge and resample. This tool, like all other uh, tool in Blueback uh, toolbox, uh, can work with uh, virtual volumes. So here I've just selected each of my 
virtual volumes have uh, bring them using the blue arrow. The tool works with time and depth. For the settings, you have uh, different or two ways uh, for the trace interpolation method. It's either sync or linear. If you want to have more information about this method, you can hover above the question mark and you will have more information. You have then the possibility to either create a new seismic volume or resample into an existing one. For this example, I'm going to create a new seismic volume. Because I'm going to create a new one, I just give it a name. Then the next step is to take uh, the, an, a lattice. So you can either take a lattice from an existing volume in your uh, project. This is what I've done. I took the lattice from Gulfax Time. You can also expand the lattice from one of the selected um, data sets. And once you click Apply, you have your three volume merged. So just as a quick recap, we used to have uh, three seismic volume with different uh, angle range or amplitude range, sorry. We've balanced them and now we have merged them together. For this example, what I want to do as well is to uh, cut the edge of um, my volume. So to do that, I'm going to use cut seismic and the first step is to create a polygon. So to create a polygon, you have a tool also in the Blueback toolbox called uh, Blueback Polygon Editor. So I'm just going to create one. And the tool works uh, in a very similar way as the petrol one. You just have to click Control and pick where you want. The advantage of this tool, it's, it's very easy to manipulate your polygon once it's been created. So you can see right away that now that my, my polygon is closed, I have now this uh, schematic uh, displayed, which allows me, if when I select a point or a segment, to move, for example, if I select this plane, my point will only move in this plane. If I select this arrow, my point is going to, use, to move only along this arrow. So it's a very uh, easy and uh, useful way of manipulating your uh, polygon. So for the purpose of the exercise, I'm going to use this polygon that I've created earlier. And I'm going here and select Cut Seismic. So for the Cut Seismic, you select uh, the seismic volume you want to cut. Again, the tool works in 2D and 3D. So if you toggle this, you can uh, toggle from 3D to 2D, and it works in time and depth. You can select a polygon, and if you select a polygon, you just have to uh, decide if you can want to keep inside or outside. You can also uh, cut in depth or time if you use a top and a base. So here you can use surfaces or just an offset. Then for the output, you select a cut value, so here zero, and a suffix. You also have the possibility here to um, save your volume outside your PTD folder. And once you click Apply, you have your new volume that was that is now cut along this polygon. So now that we have uh, merged balance, merge, and cut up our seismic dataset, we can jump into an interpretation window and work on our dataset. So let me open an interpretation window. Just selecting. So here is my dataset. And the first thing that I want to show you, it's minimap. So the minimap is located in the seismic interpretation tool palette, and it's located here. So the minimap allows you, if you especially if you display, come like here, an interpretation, to display the interpretation in the minimap. It also shows you which inline or cross line you're looking at, and it also shows you by the eye on which side of the inline or cross line you're looking at. The second tool I would like to show you, it's Deep Indicator. As its name says, it's Indicate Deep. So here you can uh, measure either um, angle on the right or, the, or on the left side. 
very easily by just clicking on it. You have some settings, uh, more settings for this uh, deep indicator in the settings of the window. If you look here, you have deep indicator. If you open the settings, you have draw style and you have the possibility to display more or less angles. So here, I'm just going to display 5, 10, 20, and 30. You also have the possibility to add uh, or the deep indicator work, works with an average sound velocity of 3000 meters per second by default. But if you want to change that, you can, and it will automatically adjust, adjust as a, with this average sound velocity. If you have a velocity model, you can also bring your velocity model and the tool will adjust as a function of your velocity model. Now I'm going to put this here. The next tool that I want to show you, it's called fault, uh, fault contact. The fault contact allows picks to be made indicating where horizons meet faults. So when you have the tool selected, you have different uh, type of contact. You have the foot wall when you click on the shift button, which is uh, highlighted by the red triangle. You can also uh, create a down contact on the hanging wall uh, by clicking on control. So you can easily pick all your faults. These fault contacts are now an object in your interpretation here and can be, can be displayed in different windows. So for example, I can open a map window. It could be a 2D window or a 3D window. And if you tile, and here, if I display my topness, you can see right away my, my uh, fault contact. So now I can go here and continue my work. When you don't know, you can click a natural. And then I can jump into another intersection and do the same work again. And so on. So it's updating on the map we do on the fly. So here is an example of something that I've done before on another interpretation. And here this is the type of results that you can have. So with this, let me put this on the side. You can then display your fault contact in 3D window. And for each contact, you have uh, several settings. So you have for each contact, the type, up, down, or neutral, the position in X, Y, and Z. And you have also the possibility to attach the contact to a fault interpretation that is located in your petrol project. With this fault contact, you can also, if you do a right click, create point set or polyline, like so, which is very useful uh, for your uh, work in petrol. The next tool, in my interpretation window is the seismic probe. So the seismic probe is located here. It allows you to do different process. If you do a right click on the probe, you have the possibility to open a new blue-black frequency spectrum window. Then if you tile your screens again, you can move the probe and your spectrum is updated on the fly. So for the spectrum, you have the possibility to either display it uh, with an image like that or as a spectrum. So again, if you move, your spectral, spectrum will update on the fly. This uh, probe is an object in your input tree. If you open it, open the settings of it, you also have the possibility to overlay uh, a seismic data set from another, uh, another data set. So for example, here I've created earlier an RMS amplitude volumes. And if I click apply, I have now on the background my uh, seismic in time. And in my seismic probe, I have my RMS amplitude. If you go to style, you have also the possib possibility to make it more transparent or opaque.
to finish, I would like to uh, show you one last tool. So let me just deselect this and close this, which is called uh, outcrop attribute. So outcrop attribute can be found in Blueback Toolbox. And this tool uh, creates a seismic attribute that highlights structural feature in seismic data. So here I've done a test uh, using Gulf Mag Gulf Gulfax in time. And if I click apply, it creates a virtual volume that is called uh, Gulfax outcrop. So because it's virtual, you can uh, easily change the RMS amplitude. So the tool works by averaging the RMS uh, in, a, in a window that you specified. So here I specified six milliseconds, but if I put 12 and click apply, you can see right away that it has updated. 12 is not the best. So this uh, Gulf Act is not the best data set to work with uh, outcrop attribute, but you can look in the help and we have a very good example where it worked very well. You also have uh, the, the paper where it's coming from, so it's in Portuguese, but if you can read Portuguese, it's great. And I can also show you an example where it works very well. So this data set, it's uh, an outcrop attribute created using an EI Chi 10 uh, volume. And you can see right away that this is my reservoir and this tool allows me to highlight it very well. So this is the end for me. First, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we love feedback, so do not hesitate to let us know what you want to see next. Uh, do not hesitate also if you have any question uh, later on to uh, ask uh, either by the, using the support email, so support.geo at seagull.com, or you can also contact the sales at seagull.com. And don't forget to register for the next video, which is next Wednesday, the 1st of April. It's not a joke. Uh, and the theme will be Blueback Investigator from Wild Log to Simulator, Interactive Upscaling QC. Now we have still have time for so, some questions, so do not hesitate to ask a question in the chat or the question tab, and I will answer them. Thank you very much. So I can see that we have several questions. Just let me open it a little bit more. So I have a question, which is, when do we the, the merge? How do you define which survey takes preference in area where the, they may overlap? The preference is in, if you look in toolbox, oh, I've closed it. So when you go to merge and resample, the preference is set by uh, the order. So the section one will have the preference over section two and section two over section three. If you want to change the preference, you can select, for example, section two and use the arrows on the right hand side by uh, moving it up. So I have another question. How did you display the box plot on the histogram uh, plot? So let me open the histogram. So the box plot, which are those three boxes here, are located here. It's draw statistics. With this tool, you can also uh, toggle the statistics, so the table at the bottom. And with this one, you can select the percentile setting. So here, by default, we have P10, P25, P50, P75, and P90. But you can deselect or select other.
Uh, so I have a question. Can you correct for time shift or phase shift between the different sections? So no, this tool is not. So I think you're, um, uh, you're talking about the amplitude balancing. This tool is a, a very easy tool that only target RMS amplitude. It doesn't uh, work for time shift or phase shift. So I had several questions, question about the, um, if the, the session was recorded. Yes, it, it was recorded and you will receive a link for the video uh, in the next 24 hours. There are more, no more questions, Lisa. Then we should close the session. Yeah. So I have uh, some questions, but we will answer them uh, later on. So thank you very much for uh, watching. Uh, do not hesitate to send more questions uh, to uh, our emails. So support.geo@sigal.com, and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.